factors. Um, so we're, I'll start with Leslie Belcher. Uh, she was elected chairman of art in 2019. And since then, she's been a, a driving force, getting many more people involved as volunteers for the organization and pushing through some exciting changes and developments. Uh, lockdown has not dampened her enthusiasm and commitment to her role. Under her leadership, art has adapted and, and embraced the situation, using the break-in ringing as an opportunity to develop many aspects of its operation and introduce new initiatives. Um, and David, David Sparling, was appointed as an art tutor in 2019 and took over the role of managing the tutor group, supporting new tutors through their skills development period and reviewing and updating the teaching modules. Uh, he's been a regular tutor on the annual Essex Ringing course since its foundation in 1991, and is a past master and a life vice president of the Essex Association of Change Ringers. So welcome to Leslie and David, and I'll now hand over to you for art and post-pandemic ringing. Okay. Thank you very much, Claire. I'm just going to share my screen and get the PowerPoint going. So can uh, everyone see that and hear me well? Claire, maybe you could let me know. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, first of all, thanks very much for inviting Art to talk to you guys today. Um, I must admit that when the invitation came through from Arthur, I felt a little bit nervous. And uh, the reason I felt nervous was, be I think, because the St. Martin's Guild have been really, really strong supporters of art since its inception over eight years ago. And David and I and myself, well, we feel like little newbies. You know, I've been around for five years in the art environment and David four. Um, and we feel, you know, sort of quite new relative to the St. Martin's Guild. But we do think that we have a very strong story to tell you about art and the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're going to start our story um, at the art conference in March earlier this year. Feels like a lifetime ago, but it's not it's only eight months and that art conference turned out to be the last big ringing event before lockdown um, the early days of lockdown I think were confusing for everyone um, for some it was a time to rest <laughs> for others it was a time to do some housekeeping and general maintenance but I think eventually we all both as individuals and ringers came to realize that this wasn't going to be a short hiatus um, but it was going to be a long break that perfect um, consequences for ringing. I think we've all found different ways to support ringers um, during lockdown and I you know that is something that the St Martins Guild has been particularly good at and something that you should be really really proud of. Um, but I think now that we've almost entered a dangerous phase with winter approaching and uh, the limited physical ringing that we were able to do over the summer, both on handbells and towerbells, all shut down. So what we need to do is continue with what we've been doing and we need to start thinking about how to rebuild ringing when some sort of normality returns. And something this is something that we're doing in partnership with the Central Council. But let's start with some introductions. Thank you, Claire. I think you've already uh, um, covered some of this. But if you don't know me, I'm Leslie, Leslie Belcher, and I've been chair of art for the last 18 months. I learned to ring when I was about 10. Um, I was taught by my grandfather. And interestingly, I was taught from the bell down position. Um, as art chair, I've been ably um, assisted by my ringing mother who is never ever afraid to let me know when what ringing is really like outside the art pub bubble. Thanks, mum. <laughs> I got really passionate about ringing when I moved away from Leicestershire to London, uh, where I became a uh, ringing master of the University of London Society of Change Ringers. I learnt how to ring handbells, which I absolutely love, and I rang peels. Um, I moved to France, 
um, for work and the arrival of children turned me into a lapsed ringer of almost 20 years, which I find very hard to believe. Um, I returned about eight years ago and I got swept into art out of curiosity more than anything else, but I was an immediate convert and I think the rest is history, as they say. David. Well, good evening, everyone. I'll do a quick introduction of myself because most of you won't know me. I am largely unknown. Um, spookily, my um, ringing career has, has kind of tracked Leslie's. I too learned as a 10 year old with my twin brother in a nice little tower tucked away in the northeast corner of Essex, Kirby Lee Soken, which are a very easy going eight. I too joined the University of London Society when I went to London um, many, many years ago. And while I was there, I learned handbells under the late great Roger Bailey, who many of you will know. I also was introduced to 12 bell ringing at that time. Having finished my studies and come back to the wastelands that are Northeast Essex, as you'll tell by this wappity internet connection, um, I continued my 12 bell ringing uh, at St Mary Le Tower underneath um, uh, George Pipe's guidance. And you'll know all about George because you heard about him just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 50 years member of the Essex Association, past master, Central Council Rep, LVP, um, joined art on an M1 course, uh, despite having been a tutor on the Essex course for 20 plus years, I still learned a lot and that was my introduction. None of those qualifications, of course, give us any hope to predict the future. Uh, so this talk is just a report on some of the things that have been going on in the background that maybe some of you don't know about, but it's also a collection of ideas, suggestions about things that might or perhaps should happen as we move forward. The hope is that it will trigger some enthusiasm and maybe encourage some of you to come forward and help contribute to that. So let's start the overall picture. Um, as Leslie quite rightly said, the story this evening starts back in March 2020, which just does seem a lifetime ago, at the art conference in Hilton in Derbyshire it was one of the most successful we'd ever had. Uh, we had 120 people all in the same room. Anyone remember those days? Uh, and it came on the back of a very, very successful year for art. Uh, we had run 61 M1, M2 courses. That's more than one a week. Uh, 569 people had been through those courses. 170 new teachers had been accredited. Uh, 1,191 learning the ropes certificates, of which 41 were at level five. We completed 14,000 pounds worth of sales of art products, DVDs, booklets, um, guides, and so on. It was a very, very successful organization at that point. We thought that, you know, we'd got our delivery pretty slick. Um, we were creative, we got people engaged, and people came away from that conference uh, really enthused. We talked about um, striking. We'd had wonderful presentations from Richard Grimmett and uh, Colin Newman, uh, and we had referenced all of that to the Art Foundation skills. So as I say, a really, really successful weekend, and people left infused and raring to go. And then in the space of 24 hours, we basically went from this, Q Leslie, to, uh, yeah. and I don't know about anyone else's, but I can, I can absolutely tell you my diary emptied it was chock-a-block and within 24 hours, it was empty. Um, and it was a bit of a shock. So if we move on, that 
initial period was really a time to reflect. It, it was empty. It was quiet. It was tranquil. At least it certainly was as far as I was concerned. All the courses that we got planned were immediately cancelled. Um, fortunately, the people who paid were very kindly rolled that over, <coughs> like so many of us have done with our concert tickets. Uh, and, and we will pick that up later. But we were left with some things to ponder. The first question, of course, was around financial stability. No income. Uh, the bookshop had to close, so zero income, and we had to uh, examine our financial stability, which very fortunately uh, is very secure. So we had uh, some significant um, balances in our account, and we had some prudent cost controls. So actually, the financial survival of art was never really a question and never really created any stress. Uh, what it next did is give us a chance to look internally and to address some of those overdue jobs. And I'm sure many of us on this call uh, will have our own personal experiences of this. There was gardening to be done. There were sheds to be painted. There was greenhouses to be cleared out. Uh, and for art, you know, there were a number of things that could be attended to. We had some processes and procedures that were creaking. They survived because people worked extremely hard uh, to make them survive. We had a smart ringer website, which was overloaded. It had become extremely large, doing things it had never been intended to do. Um, and so it gave us the opportunity to address all of those. Uh, we have a major redevelopment of smart ringer underway right at this moment. We are looking at our financial systems. And we also revisited and revamped our existing resources. And I'll talk about some more of those a bit later on. But our M1 and M2 courses, uh, we've looked at all of those and reworked the documentation and the presentations. So we used that time wisely, like many ringers did in their private lives. And actually, the other thing we could say in, in that point is um, the world gradually got used to it. And there were all kinds of things going on with Zoom quizzes. Uh, and, and remember, Ringing Room appeared as if by magic very early on. The first quarter in Ringing Room was run before the end of March. So that was a very, very early development, which was a, a great boost to those early days. However, as things went on, and as Leslie said, there was a dawning realization that this was going to go on longer than people first thought. The impacts of the pandemic became more prevalent. We saw people really beginning to miss the routine, the routine of certain practice nights, the routine of getting up and ringing for Sunday morning service. All of that was gone. We had empty days. Most of us didn't know what day of the week it was. Well, I certainly didn't. Uh, we missed the friendship, the camaraderie. Um, there are ringing friends that I used to see on a weekly basis that I have not seen in person since March. Uh, and I'm sure that's true of many of, of you on here as well. We missed the opportunities to go out and do things, whether it's peel ringing or quarter peels, or just drop in on someone's practice knowing that you would see some friendly faces and get a warm welcome. And of course, we missed the physical activity. If you think of just a, a normal ringer that goes out to two or three practices a week, rings a few touches at those practices, they would have been through 3,000 repetitions of stretching up and down, of bending elbows, of flexing their fingers, 3,000 a week. If you're a mad keen peel ringer, as I see some of the people on this call are, and you're ringing 150 peels a year, that number goes up to 15,000 repetitions per week that suddenly you've gone down to zero. And even if you do go walking the fields, you're not going to reproduce the kind of physical activity that we have from ringing. And I was talking to one of those peel ringers just the other week. Uh, and even he 
was expressing concerns about how he was going to cope with coming back afterwards because of the tightening of his fingers with arthritis, having not used them for at all since March. So there was a real impact. And what we saw is that after that second phase where we had the partial return to ringing and then the second lockdown came just a few weeks ago, those impacts really escalated uh, and, and people really begin to, to miss all the things that we love about ringing. And if we move on. So at that time, around that time of second lockdown, um, there was a considerable uh, upturn in uh, social media with uh, people asking about uh, what was going on. Um, and, and actually, you know, art at that point, people had very little idea of what was going on, even though we were quite busy in the background. We saw our role as being unchanged. Whilst we weren't able to go ringing, our, our role um, in the ringing world was unchanged. We saw ourselves still being responsible for or, or involved in the teaching and the encouraging and the sharing and the motivating. We just had to find new ways of doing that in a world where we could not get into the towers. So that didn't change. But what did change was the way of delivering those and and art actually had a significant strategic change at that point prior to lockdown although this had started before the lockdown came in but it certainly escalated uh, once we were refused permission to do our, our usual jobs um, arts resources had been available only to art members but what happened during the early stages of lockdown is that we made the decision to open those up to all. And so many of the things that were previously on Smart Ringer, which was available only to members, have been moved to Art's main website and are now freely available. So in particular, our recruitment and retention toolkit uh, was moved across and it was actually picked up by the um, Central Council v &L work group, who used it as the basis for the recruitment and retention workshop that they presented at the conference. Uh, you remember the conference, that was before we all got locked down. Uh, we made the simulator toolkit uh, available, revamped it and made it available. And this is a series of articles uh, that can take you through building a simulator, uh, setting one up, as well as some tips on how to use it. We completely revamped the Learn to Ring handbells section and um, again moved that onto our main website. And actually handbells is one of those things that we've seen a, a really positive resurgence, um, partly because it was the first thing we could do as lockdown eased. We were allowed to meet outside and the sun shone and it was lovely. Uh, so we could do that. And then uh, even later on, we were allowed to meet in small groups inside, which, uh, which facilitated handbell ringing. And of course, you can do it on Able on your own. You can do it uh, on Virtual Belfry. Um, you can do it on Bell Tower. Uh, you can do it with friends on Ringing Room or Handbell Stadium. Uh, and, and there has been a real take up of handbells. We now, of course, have e-bells available. Um, motion controllers, which uh, give as close to a real handbell ringing experience as you can get in a virtual environment. And, and interestingly, on the day that the e-bells were made available, orders for 138 bells were placed within hours. Uh, I know because I was too late and I'm now at the back of queue. As well as handbells, uh, we made method toolkits available. So they had always covered plain Bob, Grantser, as you might expect, but we added a minimus toolkit as well, 
for those starting off on handbells and also for those during um, a gentle uh, introduction to ringing, where often we are only able to ring three or four bells, um, that gave people a bit more to do the ringing plain hunt on four. And finally, the youth toolkit, uh, which is work in progress, but is now being picked up by the Central Council youth coordinators. So a huge body of materials were made available in the early stages of, um, of the pandemic. Following on from that, um, we've been working on some new resources. So all of those kind of existed, um, may have been revamped, but we've also been working on some completely new resources. So we have a COVID support page in keeping with many, many other societies and guilds, including St. Martin's, I know, um, but I have a screenshot of it here and you will see access to it is via the resources tab on the uh, ART thing. And on that resources tab, you'll also find the links to the other items that I talked about, handbells and simulators and the rest of it. It's a page which is far too big to put on a PowerPoint presentation, although I had a half decent stab. Um, it's got some information on it, but also it's got links all over the place, including of course, to the St. Martin's Guild website and all the goodies that you have on there. So that's COVID um, tool set. We added a new YouTube channel. And again, we've got a screenshot of YouTube. Um, it's got, again, a host of different little videos, how to use Able, how to use Virtual Belfry. Again, more information on Handbell Basics and um, also an introduction to ringing room for those people who've never used it before and I'll come back to that a bit later on. It also has an introduction to Zoom, not that that will be of any interest to you lot because you're already on it of course, um, but I can tell you I've used it in circles outside of ringing, uh, so thank you to Art for making that freely available uh, and um, uh, long may it continue. Uh, so as well as ABLE, we have also developed a new online learning portal. Again, um, screenshot of that. This, not dissimilar to the St. Martin's Guild uh, portal with all your recorded webinars, these two have a number of recorded webinars and you'll see some familiar and famous faces uh, set on that screenshot. Uh, Claire has done a, a really excellent uh, overview of understanding call changes. If you haven't seen it, even if you can ring call changes, I really encourage you to have a look at that. It's it's superb. Um, Simon has uh, done a uh, a webinar on composition and calling uh, of minor, uh, and we've got you know the usual calling bobs and and plain hunt. But in addition to that, we added in some things which are you know less traditional art subjects. Um, we have a little one on maintenance and it's not a deep dive and, and it's not going to turn you into a bell hanger, but it does give some tips and guidance for those people that need to go and do an inspection of their bells before they go back in the belfry after many months of silence. Um, it's also got a, a small video on rope splicing and knots. Uh, why? Well, because we felt that they were useful interesting and important, and we didn't see anyone else doing them. Uh, if anyone else wants to pick that up and run with it and go further, we'd be overjoyed. But for the moment, at least, there is something there for people to start to look at. And finally, in the things that we have done, uh, we've reopened the art shop. So we had to rejig some of our processes and ensure that our packing and distribution was safe. Uh, and the art shop is now alive and open for business. We've seen a steady stream of orders, not, you know, not berserk, um, but really interesting yet again. Uh, our bestseller in the last few weeks has been learning the ropes handbell logbooks. So it just re-emphasizing the importance of handbell ringing during this pandemic. So, those were the kind of early stages, if you like. Um, and now we're coming a bit more up to where we are now. 
Um, and I touched on it before that the arrival of the second lockdown had a really dramatic effect. We saw a real um, increase in the number of social media posts from people saying um, what's happening, who's doing anything, is anything being done, um, you know, wh where are we going? And interestingly, it came at a time when Art and the Central Council were already starting to talk about the need for something which we called a survival and recovery toolkit, um, all built around a survival and recovery strategy. Uh, and it is very much driven jointly by art and the Central Council. Um, and its focus right at the moment is the now. How do we maintain motivation over winter? The sheds are painted, the lofts are cleared. It's dark and colder. Uh, and people find a path through the forest, if you like. We've got to find a way to keep people motivated. And I'm very much minded of the great explorer, Sir Ranulph Fiennes, the oldest British man to, or the oldest British person um, to climb Everest. He climbed it on the third attempt, having two failures. And one of the failures he put down to looking too far ahead. He kept looking to see how far away he was from the summit. And he would determine how far it was to go. But when he got there, he found it was a blind summit. And actually, once you'd reached that little mini summit, there was a whole heap more to go. And, and what he did on attempt number three, which was successful, is to adopt the simple mantra, which was, plod forever. All you need to think about is the next step. Think about the here and now, follow the path, and at some point, which we do not know, we will get to the summit. So our survival strategy is very much one of finding ways to keep people focused during the winter. Um, we've had an initial strategy meeting um, and uh, you know, there's a number of ideas circulating, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But one of, those, one of those things that fits into that plod forever is to grab all of the opportunities that come up. So there's general um, early day discussions going on about perhaps ringing a single bell for Evensong or perhaps being allowed to do minimal ringing for Christmas. Now, we don't know whether they're going to come off or not as yet, but I think this here and now survival strategy is one of grabbing anything that we can. It might not be perfect, but it is an opportunity to keep people engaged, uh, to let all of our members, all of our bands have a go at doing something, giving them a simple introduction to ringing again after what could be several months. Principally, we've recognized, however, uh, that the success of any strategy will depend on clear ongoing communications. And we need to get that out across as many channels and at all the media we possibly can and make sure that it's seen by people at the grassroots. Uh, and, and we know how difficult that is. Um, Simon, in many of his Central Council blogs, have talked about the challenges of communicating. And that's down to all of us to spread the word. So that, that's the, the, the bare bones. And there are some specifics around that, um, which I'll go on to. The timing of that a uh, strategy meeting between Art and Central Council um, actually was, again, very fortuitous in that Art had already been working on a number of initiatives that, that were developed because we thought we need them, not as part of a, a wider collective strategy. Uh, but they have given us some pretty quick wins in, in putting something out there which is useful. So all of these on here are, are new or about to be available. So first and foremost, we have developed 
an online ringing room workshop. So this is a workshop aimed at um, encouraging people to get involved with ringing room. Um, we've run four pilots of it so far. We have six other courses already planned and they're already fully subscribed. And we've got another 20 people on the waiting list for them. So there is still a need. You may think that lots of people have been ringing already. And I'll talk a bit about that in a moment or two. Um, but there is a real desire for that. Adverts are out on um, ART, uh, Facebook and Twitter. So if you follow any of those, you'll see how to sign up. And um, uh, you can also find information on that under the news uh, part of the ART website. So if you are interested in that, um, do sign up. It's how to run a practice in Ringing Room and some tips and ideas about things that people have used and have worked. And our hope is that people will come on those courses, be infused and want to take them and deliver them to their own local people. It, you know, it is something which we believe we need to push out to as many people as we can. On a similar basis, we have developed a online 50 virtual ringing things. Some of you may be familiar with the 50 ringing things scheme uh, that's been running for a few years. Uh, a whole load of things to do as a ringer that otherwise you might not have thought of. And it's been subscribed to by new ringers as well as people who have been ringing for donkey's years. Um, so we've got a, a new version of that, which is one to be able to do online uh, and that it's up on the online learning portal and it will be triggered live uh, in the next little while. As part of that, there's a minor stepping stones process which is a, a series of minor methods to take someone from plain hunt, plain bob, right through to splice surprise minor, introducing new methods, trying also to introduce useful concepts of um, place notation, of place spells, of method structure, rather than it being a pure mental exercise of learning loads of blue lines. Um, and I think that, again, will be of interest to a number of people. Uh, your very own Simon Linford is looking at running uh, some surprise major ringing room practices. I talked about ringing room before. It is widely used, um, but it's used mainly, mainly, not exclusively, by people who are at the rounds and call changes, plain hunt, uh, maybe learning plain bob doubles and minor at one end. And then we see court appeals of Surprise Maximus and peals of 23 spliced all the work Surprise Major uh, being rung on Ringing Room as well. There's not so much going on in the middle. And so this is an attempt to try and engage all of those ringers that are perfectly competent ringers that may not as yet have bothered with Ringing Room because they haven't seen it for them. On Bellboard, there is a brand new COVID hub. That embarrassingly looks like Leslie might have fallen off the um, uh, fallen off the webinar. So just give me a second, and uh, maybe I can share my screen. This is where your um, your skills as a as a seasoned professional come into question. Well, yeah, uh, David, you did manage to share your screen earlier when, when we uh, first set up. So let's hope you'll be yes, able to- I, I, haven't got the, um, I haven't got the PowerPoint uh, quite on the right slide yet. So let me try and pick up where we were. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Leslie will uh, rejoin us. I will be with you in just one second. Well, while you're doing that, David, we, we had one comment in um, uh, in the chat box uh, just to remind people that there that there is more than one a virtual ringing platform than ringing room. Uh, 
somebody was uh, uh, was um, keen to let let us remind us that there are the other ringing platforms like Ding as well. Absolutely, and and I should have said that. And of course, there's a lot more than just one. Um, uh, uh, simulator as well. Um, so those the online portal covers uh, virtual belfry as well as able. So you're you're quite right. Many other things are available. Um, so I just saw Leslie join again, um, and then she might have just dropped off, which is uh, slightly awkward. But let let me pick up where we were. So just today um, on Bellboard there is a new COVID hub, which has been launched. Um, it, its purpose is to act as the go-to place for information on COVID. Now, you know, everybody's got something on there. Central Council have, Art has, St Martin's has, Essex Association has, everybody has. Um, but the idea is that we would start to use Bellboard as the go-to place. It may well and will provide links out to many other different resources, but for breaking news and, and places to go to see what's happening today, uh, Bellboard now has a COVID hub, which is up and running. And, and also the final thing I would say about this, this survival phase and getting through, um, we need more events like this. So, you know, I recognise we're preaching to the converted here. You've all turned out to listen to me and Leslie on a, on a Wednesday evening and have listened to many, many different things. So, you know, clearly St Martin's Guild is at the forefront of engaging with its members. But we need lots more people to be able to do the same thing. And not just online. Uh, all kinds of things. In Essex, for example, some of the districts have organised um, distanced walks. So they've managed to get small groups of people together and, and go on walks and at least um, have that uh, social cohesion, which otherwise is lacking. And at this point, I had very much intended to hand over to Leslie, and I'm not sure whether you are back online yet, Leslie. Yes, I am. Okay. So um, I'm going to be talking about the part of the survival and recovery um, strategy. And I'm going to start by thinking about the uh, likely impact of COVID-19 on ringing. This is our best guess, but I think it's probably quite a reasonable guess. First of all, we know that we're going to lose some ringers and they are going to be concentrated probably at both ends of the experience curve. Um, as David's already said, old, older ringers in particular, some physical conditioning because they've not been practicing every week and they probably won't be able to return to ringing. So fine that some of our new recruits might be quite relieved that they're no longer ringing and they will drift away and found other hobbies and then want to return. We should also expect that some ringers will be doing less when they come back. I've been surprised by the number of peel ringers that I've been um, speaking to who now they haven't been able to ring peels for um, a number of months that have looked back and sort of said, I do all that. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to concentrate on other aspects of ringing. We're also going to see experience who've taken some time off and actually have really, really enjoyed having a much better balance in their lives. They found other things to do and they want to carry on. They'll do ringing, but they're also going to probably be doing less of it and focus on the things that give them the most satisfaction. Some bands and towers are going to stop ringing, either because they haven't got enough ringers and don't know how to recover from that situation perhaps in the longer term due to church closures. And some bands are no longer going to be able to support method ringing at all, maybe, or to a standard of striking and um, competence that, that they find satisfying. 
And I think that could very well lead um, to ringers slowly drifting away unless something is actually done about that. That all sounds rather negative, but there are positives out there as well, positives that we should recognize and use. Um, churches and communities really, really missed their bell quite visible and very loud in their appreciation of the partial return that came in the summer to ringing. There is a new leadership emerging, either people filling leadership vacuums or replacing those who think that, who say that they've done their bit and, they, and it's time that the next generation took over. And we're seeing examples of both of those. So if we've identified these as the key, um, some of the key issues, what can be done to rebuild ringing when it resumes? Well, what we're looking at here is building some sort of recovery strategy. Now, nobody knows when and how ringing is going to resume in some sort of normal form. Um, it's unlikely to be a big bang event. Um, and it might very well vary in different parts of the country and also will depend on, I think, every ringer's appetite for, for risk. But at the moment, we are assuming, knowing that this might change. But regardless of when it happens, what we really need is a plan, a really detailed about what, what we need to do and that we can trigger at the right time. So I almost, almost see it as a, like a, a piece of paper that I can pull out the top drawer of my desk, okay, and, and start implementing when the time is right. I think we have to also accept that ringing might be different from what it was um, before March. Um, things that might be different from practices might not be possible or maybe encouraged and we might be looking at closed or invited practices period of time which can have implications on people feeling excluded or cliques formed um, and we might all know that many bands may now start having to work together in order to survive, which is which will begin to challenge the one band, one tower mindset, which is so common in ringing at the moment. And whatever we, as in the art and the sense, and even guilds and associations do, it really is going to be the grassroots ringers who find the solution, find and implement the solutions that work for them, their local ringers and the local environment. That's how ringing works. To be honest, I would have been past about whether we um, had the capacity to deliver quickly and on the scale required. However, I think a lot has happened in the last eight months to make me feel more optimistic. We've seen the widespread um, uptake of new technologies that I would have thought impossible in March. This, these give ringers a much wider ringing circle of friends and ways of hearing about things that maybe they wouldn't have heard, at, uh, heard of before. So, so many people are probably like me who go, even my mum uses Zoom now. I think as well that another thing that makes me feel quite optimistic is that we are seeing new tower captains and new leaders popping up. I've been talking down in Cornwall to some, uh, someone called Hayley Young, who in her local um, association felt no one was doing anything over the summer. So she occupied the space, organized a set of Sunday evening webinars, very like these, and invited people like me, Simon, and Will Bosworth, amongst others, to come along and speak. That initiative. She's now become secretary of the Guild, which, which actually involved a very nice handover from some, one of these people who said, I've demand, I think you've got the right skills to actually take us forward from now. And I've just heard from her yesterday that her husband has just been handed the tower captain job in her local, um, local tower 
um, by the elderly incumbent. And I'm very pleased to say that how will be helping us out with the implementation, implementation of the strategy over the next months. I think a successful is going to um, require um, people to accept um, the challenge of doing things differently. Working harder, doing the same things that we've always done might really be the definition of madness that Grafco Marx said it was. We have to recognize the fact that over the last decades, we've seen a gradual decline in the number of ringers and a gradual rise in the average of uh, the age of the ringing population. And it's something that we haven't been able to stop despite some very small national initiatives. But factors such as the scale of the challenge, the adoption of new technologies and the arrival of new leaders mean that this is a good time as ever to try and introduce new ideas. So that's why we're currently looking to set up a group, a group of people from across the country with different, uh, at, at different stages in their ringing careers to try and collect ideas and start seeding them now. They're little small things, little small stories, little small tips, which show positive ways of dealing with today's problems in keeping people motivated, but will also show solutions. So what sort of things are we thinking of in this strategy and recovery uh, toolbox or um, strategy that we're, we're talking about? And when I say we, I mean the Central Council and Art. Well, um, I pulled together yesterday a, an Excel spreadsheet, well over 30 activities on the um, to-do list. Actually, nothing too wacky and some already started say about 75% of them already have names against them. So what are they? Well, I'm going to go try and give a flavour of the types of things we're looking at in the recovery strategy and group things into three main areas. The first one is about the transition into ringing, get fit for ringing. And I'm thinking here of things like physical conditioning, the type of loss of um, flexibility and muscle strength and balance that David's already talked about. Originally, I wasn't that keen on this idea because in my mind, I was thinking of this being very much at the older end of the age spectrum. But the more I talk to people, the more people are saying what physical states they're in it, when people are in their 40s, 50s and 60s. The idea of being able to produce um, YouTube videos for people to look after their hands or look after their shoulders is something that I think might resonate with, peop with people in those particular age groups. Confidence building, both and emotion. Emotional. And we really shouldn't underestimate how many people are going to be scared of coming back and ringing a bell for the first after what could well be a year off ringing. Um, I recently had a, an ODG um, education meeting with which Tony Crabtree is one of the members. And in his local branch, he um, gave out um, he contacted every, every, all the towers and said, if you want to practice on the simulator with me being present before you ring on your first Sunday, then please let me know. And I must admit, I was really surprised that 25% of the branch members actually took advantage of this offer. That shows how much, how many people are lacking in confidence. So one of the things that we'll be doing is um, pulling together a, sim a map uh, of where opportunities exist, either at uh, um, existing simulators, of which I think there's just under 250 of them in the country, provided at other towers by guilds and associations. The other thing that we need to do is think about our team 
looking to um, provide both online and physical, when we can, um, refresher courses for um, art teachers. They are going to be both for those um, who've maybe been on an art course three to six months before lockdown and hadn't had an opportunity to actually teach anyone. But I think that we all ought to think about going on one of these refresher courses, even if it's the um, online one. If we've not taught through, there's a lot of things, that, little things that we might have forgotten and it wouldn't do us any harm to, um, to have a quick look at those. I think the second arm is about replacing lost ringers and teachers. And I think the first part of that is let's lose, let's keep hold of as many of the existing ringers as we possibly can. So, and that's the whole point of the survival strategy that um, David's been talking. But then there are other things that we can do. So one of the important ones is motivating what I call our lockdown learners. Those learners who have just Flew, flown in ringing room and their theory now extends well beyond their bell control. They've got a lot out of it but they are really out of kilter when it comes to being, coming back into the tower. So at the moment we're, um, I've got someone looking at how to motivate these people looking at um, a goal which will instead of being on method development will be on things like bell control, striking and performance. And they'll, it, this will consist of resources, both for the teachers and ringers. We also should, I think, encourage people to continue with this blended learning concept. So we don't just have a cliff edge going from online learning and handbell ringing down to um, uh, ringing in the tower. To motivate people, we would need to encourage um, to continue to have online learning sessions so that we, where people feel that they are progressing, even if sometimes bell control lessons are a little bit slower than they would like. And I think some people are going to be in immediate trouble. I was talking away um, to someone uh, down in Cornwall in the um, Lizard Peninsula and um, there was a tower captain down there. I said, there is no way that my band is going to come back. They're in their 80s and they just won't be able to do it. So what, what am I going to do? And I'm not the only tower captain in this position down here. And the conversation that happened, I thought, was really rather positive because it was a conversation about why don't we contact all the churches in, your, in that area, find out when all the services are, why don't we mop up all the ringers who are, who, who are in bands that won't survive and actually form a little less uh, a, a hit squad and you, and you use those and ring up all the services. And they did that through the summer and they found it incredibly motivating. So we need to find and tell the stories about how to keep people going um, straight away actually. Another thing that we need to do is think we recruit and retain people. We obviously had the recruitment and retention workshop at the art conference, and we are looking to do this completely online. We're looking at videos, online resources, and also online discussion groups. Another arm here, which is to do with um, trying to get people um, into the tower who are not raw recruits is the activation of laps ring. This is a bit of a longer term project, but I mean, just as a little thought provoker here, we did um, a, um, a study of laps ringers in 2019. And I think we had about 250 replies to that survey um, by laps ringers. And over 40% of those who we contacted were able to ring surprise minor and over 60% were able to ring Grantser and Plain Bob. What a great resource to tap into if we can. With an art about how to adapt the delivery of our teaching modules. So initially we think that we might need to go small and local. We are willing to take a financial loss to do this 
and we have charged our tutors to go out and make these local courses happen. I think in the longer term though, we're looking at new delivery mechanisms, which is hard because what we're teaching is a practical skill. We do want to train up a new generation of ringing teachers as part of the recovery strategy. So we're, consider we're thinking of this as a, an interesting problem that we've only just started thinking about, but we are thinking about it. The final strand is around motivation and leadership. We've got to we have the opportunity with a whole load of new leaders coming in to actually train them. We can offer tower captains what you need to do, what you need to know to be successful. And if we can do this virtually, we can actually form a network. And it delivered centrally, it can also be delivered through guilds and associations. There's an opportunity here to think what ringing practice is about. Um, Claire McArdle is developing and learning the ropes call chain scheme for bands. It's for new bands and those who perhaps lost too many method ringers and it will encourage performance as well as a lifetime of opportunities to develop. Wouldn't, I mean, I th the way I think of it, wouldn't it be great if we no longer have to listen to new bands ringing poor and hunt for years on end and making virtually no progress? And wouldn't it be wonderful if call change ringing was considered the poor relative of method ringing? Group teaching and group learning is a common AJB call. But at the Birmingham School of Ringing, you know what an impact this can have on both learners and teachers. And of course, what hard work it is too. Wouldn't it be good to have a Birmingham School of Bell Ringing, a Worcester or a Mancroft in every county? Not a short term aim, but I, that was, might be something that we'd be working towards. And finally, we need to consider the creation of ringing centres for the development of method ringing, which on the central council agenda. I, I look at these as um, being really important for grassroots ringers who are working so hard to get ringing growing and need a little bit of sanity ringing in order to um, keep themselves going. We have to realise that after putting all this and expectation on teachers and tower captains has the risk of burnout, that we must both recognise and actively seek. So I'm just going to go through to the end. Um, final thoughts. Well, obviously COVID has been a massive shock to ringing and it was to art as well. And I must say that we have to say thank you to both our members who have continued to pay their membership subs even though they're doing no teaching at the moment. Um, we have to thank our financial supporters who confirm their support to art and what it's doing. What we've had is an opportunity for art to set up for the next 10 years, and that's something that we've grasped with both hands. It's probably took its time to, um, to find its fit, but art is now ready to play an active and positive role in post-pandemic ringing. Thanks very much for your time today. And if anyone's got any questions, David and I would be del delighted to answer them. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Leslie and David. Um, that's I, I've been, uh, even though I, I, I admit I'm on the uh, I'm on the art uh, management committee. So I know uh, a lot about many of the initiatives that have uh, that, that are being put in place. Um, and uh, but, uh, but even so, it's been a, an extremely interesting um, uh, presentation to uh, to be listening to, to just realise just how much is being done and uh, and to be quite um, uh, proud that I'm a, I'm a very small part of it. Um, I, I, there's been a, a few comments in the chat box, uh, a couple of sort of questions uh, um, as we've been going along as so I've been making a note of those. Um, 
uh, what there was a, a comment about uh, well, what David mentioned about ringing room and there, uh, there not being any um, uh, uh, the, the initiative of trying to get some practice surprise major practices going on on ringing room, uh, and we had a, a comment from AJB who's with us today who said. Uh, the reason why the middle uh, the middle is missing in these practices because the middle is missing. So I, th I think uh, that's <laughs> I think he feels that the the middle ground of ringers is missing anyway. Um, but uh, hopefully the initiative of of uh, starting the surprise majors practices with the resources and the communication that we have uh, uh, going on will uh, will do something to address that. Um, I had a question from Steph um, uh, Steph Warboys who uh, said that the at the art conference the uh, uh, in March way back in March that we can barely remember um, the focus was on on listening skills. Um, uh, and uh, Steph feels that this is an area that could be advanced while we are still in the in our virtual phase. And so she did wonder whether there was any update on 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 the sort of listening skills uh, type of uh, resources from art. Yes, there have been um, some conversations about that. There has been some um, uh, conversations with society about using some of their resources. Um, Leslie Boyle has stepped forward to take responsibility for this and um, she's got some quite interesting um, sounding ideas. She has got sidetracked with the ringing room workshops at the moment but we're hoping that in uh, that she'll be able to um, refocus on the striking listening skills but they are definitely there. Okay, thank you. Um, a, a couple of uh, good news stories coming in. Uh, well, a good news story from Wales. We had uh, Beverly, who's uh, on the call, uh, is says that uh, of course the fire break in Wales has been lifted. So actually, in North Wales, there they are ringing again, um, and it sounds like the sort of things they're doing in in North Wales are are. Um, uh, are, are exactly what uh, art and central council are sort of prescribing are the sort of new type new ways of of uh, getting things going again so they're hosting ringing room practices they're having sunday services and they're even teaching uh, new recruits uh, at with the 15 minute lessons a week <laughs> so, uh, so uh, already trying to find uh, ways around that um uh, beverly's also just posted a question to ask what is what is the position around ringing on simulators? So I think you you did cover that you the art are um, are uh, going to produce a, a, a sort of map of where simulators are, but I wonder where we are on that in that in the progress on that. Perhaps perhaps that's what the question was about. Okay, so that is the question. The, the mechanism of, of collecting and displaying the data has all, all been sorted out. Roger Booth is um, taking responsibility this, for this action. And um, I, I know that it's on his to-do list. He's actually started contacting people or not at the moment. But I'm thinking that this is not a high priority at the moment because we're not looking at returning um, until at least after Christmas, so even in a small way. No, okay, that's uh, thank you. Um, we've had a, a, a few other comments in the the uh, in the chat box. Um, Joe Tucker says that um, uh, call change ringing is lauded wherever we ring it. So that uh, gladdens <laughs> my heart, of course, because uh, <laughs> working on the idea of of creating some. Uh, perhaps some call change bands when ringing resumes, and uh, and and maybe not, uh, maybe trying to uh, to up the uh, uh, up the the uh, re respect that people have for call changes, mm. rather than feeling that call changes is just a step stepping stone towards method ringing, that they are uh, glorious in their own right. Yes, <laughs> um, uh, I think. Is that uh, oh and Alan Nunley, uh, who must be I, I think he must be in North America because he said he was very interested in the small and local in North America. So the ideas of that uh, you were you were uh, uh, telling us about about what's happening in Cornwall, the way mm. that they addressed um, local ringing over the summer. Um, so I don't there there aren't any more questions in. Um, 
in the chat box. But one of the things that um, that I was wondering about was um, uh, we, we've mentioned blended learning, or you've mentioned blended learning throughout, and um, uh, and I, I, I personally think it would be very good if we could um, if we could uh, uh, if the art teaching modules could be a uh, could be. Uh, blended learning modules so that I mean personally as an art tutor uh, I think you're probably aware of this Leslie that that, I, that I've always felt that mm. that, uh, that it's it's a very very tiring day as a as a tutor let alone as, a, as somebody who's on one of the courses uh, and I've, I've often uh, wondered about the idea of being able to uh, to uh, put some of the learning either on a on a zoom platform or or ind independent learning. So it was originally I was thinking independent learning, but as we're also familiar with Zoom and Teams mm. these days, I, I'm I'm thinking that that could be a a, a good way to go uh, with with some of the art teaching modules. So uh, I'm sure David perhaps might be considering this as well. So I don't know if it's David. Still Absolutely. Yet. I mean, as Leslie said, as we. As we come out of this, we're going to have to be prepared to do things differently. And I think that's a, a perfect example mm. of how we might need to look at how we do things differently. Yes. Doing the same thing, but doing more of it is not going to be the solution. We suspect, we don't know, but um, I think we all have to be open-minded uh, to how we approach these things. And, and certainly I think, you know, it, 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 it is excellent food for thought about how we could split one of those modules uh, mm. across a blended learning environment. Yes. Uh, so, um, oh yes, we've got a, a comment just come through, uh, a couple more comments just come through. Uh, uh, so Anne says, it's my um, ambition for, for my tower to win the Guild Six Bell competition with call changes. So it's another vote for call changes as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Alison Hodge uh, is saying, let's share documents more rather than each Guild or tower creating their, their own version of every policy or, or procedure. Uh, there's far too much repetition. So I, I, know, I think that you, you'd probably agree and uh, that, uh, that um, one of the reasons I, I expect for the online learning portal and the sharing of, of art resources had probably had this very much in mind. It well did. Uh, and I guess the, the collaboration with Central Council too. Uh, right, so uh, I wonder if, can we stop screen sharing now? Uh, so perhaps if we, uh, Trying. okay, <laughs> all right, thank you, David. Um, so we've got to, well, we've just got a different screen now, but uh, uh, to the right. Yeah, so if you just, it should be at the top of your screen to the right of the green bar and it should say stop share. Well done, okay, thank you. Right, well, I think that, um, uh, uh, that we should uh, draw this to a con conclusion now. I, I must say, uh, I've, as I said before, even though I'm uh, quite involved with art myself, I found it an extremely interesting presentation. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Leslie and David. Uh, I think uh, there's been there's a lot of food for thought there for people, um, and a lot of positive uh, uh, positive vibes coming from. Uh, from art and I know there's lots of positive things coming out of the Central Council as well uh, and and I, I'll admit to myself that feeling that you know we're uh, that that it, it's it does seem like is there ever going to be an end to this and uh, and I and I've had dips and depression about the idea of of are we ever going to ring normally again and worries too as a tower captain I've had mm. worries that that I've got, you know, some of my band members. That that that. What are they going to be? What's it going to be like for them when they come back to to ringing? We've got learners who who could just about ring in rounds when uh, when we went into lockdown, but at, and now they can ring plain hunt and uh, looking at ringing methods inside on ringing room. However, then uh, I'm 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 
certain they're not going to be able to just go straight back into the tower to, and, and achieve that. So that's another worry for when we get started as how to keep them motivated. Uh, so maybe yet another thing for us to worry about. However, uh, I think the very positive things that are coming out of art and, and the Central Council uh, are, should give us all hope. And I like the idea of plodding from one, 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 one step at a time. <laughs> uh, that sounds very good. Uh, so if, if anybody has, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's um, appreciation coming through on the chat box. So if you do get a chance to have a look at the chat box, uh, David and Leslie, please do. Uh, and uh, so, sorry to interrupt. Can I just um, plug next week quickly? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I'll let uh, Arthur plug next week and perhaps we can stop the recording now. So yeah. 